Hi, this is Dr. Katie Bailey, and today we're going to discuss intracranial aneurysms. Our objectives to discuss intracranial aneurysms, the definition, most common locations, and post-treatment, as well as some practice cases. A cerebral aneurysm is defined as an outpouching due to wall weakness. The descriptors that we use in radiology are saccular, meaning it's round, around outpouching, mycotic, meaning associated with an infection, traumatic, which is post-trauma, oncotic, related to a cancer, fusiform, meaning a longer segment, dissecting, associated with a dissection, and a pseudoaneurysm, which is less than three, three layers of the wall being involved in the aneurysm, usually the intima and the media. A giant aneurysm is defined as an aneurysm that measures greater than one centimeter. So this is an example of a giant aneurysm. On T2-weighted imaging, it usually has heterogeneous signal, areas that are low signal and high signal, depending if there's clot or flow. On this hemosiderin sensitive sequence, you see the rim is dark, and then there's that heterogeneous signal centrally with areas that are low signal and high signal. And on MRA image, you can see the aneurysm as well. Where to find aneurysms? Most saccular aneurysms arise from the arteries of the circle of Willis. The most common location, labeled one, is the anterior communicating artery. The second most common is the posterior communicating artery. The third is the middle cerebral artery bifurcation or trifurcation. And the fourth is the posterior circulation, with the most common of those being at the basilar tip. Mycotic or infectious aneurysms are most common in the more distal MCA branches, so you'd be looking further out here, M2, M3, M4 segments. Saccular versus fusiform. So here is a saccular aneurysm of the anterior communicating artery, which you can see is this pooch demonstrating low signal on this T2 weighted image. Here it is on a CTA. This one has more lobulations, also the anterior communicating artery. As opposed to a fusiform aneurysm, which involves a longer segment, this one is actually associated with a dissection. So this is a dissecting fusiform aneurysm. You see it has that yin-yang appearance, areas that are hypodense and more hyperdense, filling with contrast. And this is a dissecting fusiform aneurysm of the basilar artery. A thrombosed aneurysm on non-contrast CT can demonstrate areas of peripheral calcification. So here is an ICA aneurysm that is thrombosed. Here it is on the coronal view. You see that peripheral calcification and that central hypodensity. This one has a stent next to it. That's what that is. On MRA, you can see not much once the aneurysm is thrombosed. In this one, you see a little bit of the wall on the MIP image. On the source image, you can say a little bit of flow within the thrombosed aneurysm adjacent to the wall. And on the axial T2 weighted image, it's again that heterogeneous signal. This one has mostly areas of low T2 signal. And then that area that's showing up on the MIP images as well as the source image is also showing bright on the T2 weighted image. An aneurysm with flow looks a little different. On a non-contrast CT, it can be very subtle. It's a little hyperdense compared to the adjacent soft tissue of the brain. So here is the aneurysm. On the coronal view, you can see loss of the CSF around that temporal lobe, which should indicate there's some sort of mass occupying lesion in that location. This one's homogeneously hyperdense. On the axial T2 weighted image, you see that saccular outpouching projecting laterally which is very hypo-intense on T2 because there is flow within the aneurysm. On the MRA source, it is bright because there is flow in it. And on the MRA MIP, you also see it pooching out to the side. How to report an aneurysm? You always discuss the location, which vessel is it at a branch point, and which direction it's pointing, anterior, posterior, superior, inferior, medial, lateral. You describe all of that is a vessel coming off of the aneurysm? And if it is, which part of the aneurysm is that vessel coming off of and which vessel is it? You always measure the size of the aneurysm in three planes. And if you are able to, you measure the neck separately, as this example shows. You describe if the aneurysm has a smooth wall or if it's irregular or lobular. 
And where you see one aneurysm, always look for two or three or four. Are there any associated vascular abnormalities? Is it associated with an AVM? Is, is it associated with a DVA? Is it associated with a mass in the case of an oncocytic aneurysm? Aneurysm treatment comes in two main flavors, although there's also the uh, stent, which I showed in the previous case. This is an aneurysm clip. It looks like a little pair of scissors at the location where the aneurysm was. You can also do coil embolization. So you have this big ball of metallic density with a lot of streak artifact from it. And usually the clip is a dead giveaway because you see a craniotomy or a craniectomy defect associated with it. Whereas the coil embolization, you may not see a craniotomy defect. All right, so practice case number one, all three planes of imaging. So when I'm looking for aneurysms, I follow each vessel and I all vessels should be flowing. They should be moving away from the location of where they started. So when you're looking for an aneurysm, you're looking for a vessel that just abruptly stops. So in this case, you see anterior communicating artery, this lobular outpouching projecting anteriorly, it just stops, it doesn't go anywhere. So here it is on the coronal, here it is on the sagittal. So these A2 branches are continuing on, but this lobular or saccular outpouching just stops where it is. That is an anterior communicating artery aneurysm. Practice case two, you follow the vessels of the circle of Willis. I usually start at the most common locations. I see, oh, is there an outpouching at the anterior communicating artery? No. Well, then go to the supraclinoid ICA and look at the second most common location. So here's the posterior communicating artery and oh, I see a saccular outpouching. And then you look at it on the MIP images, you can see it is not going anywhere. It is just pooching out. So it's going posteriorly and inferiorly. This is a supraclinoid right ICA aneurysm adjacent to the PCOM origin. Practice case three. You look at the most common locations. I'm not showing you a good picture of the anterior communicating artery, so you can rule that one out. And the posterior communicating artery, not quite there. I'm not showing you the MCA, except you can't see it on the MIP images. So let's look for location number four. Here's the basilar tip. Oh, there's an outpouching projecting anteriorly, superiorly. You look at it on the MIP images. Here is a saccular outpouching that actually has two distinct lobulations. This is a basilar tip aneurysm. Thank you for your attention.